Voltage would probably be important. So let's select peak to peak, showing 13.7. That's great. Something else that we can do too is we can do full screen. Hey folks, and welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today we're gonna be going through basically a test drive of the Pocket Pro, something that was sent to me by the company. And all they asked is that I just make a video about it. Here we go. If you're interested in purchasing this, or if you already have it and you just wanna learn more of how to use the functions, this video should be for you. There's a lot to go over. First, let's take a look at the app. We can see this is kind of like your main menu. You can connect up to four devices to the app. We have our Pocket Pro listed here. You can go to the settings and you can check your firmware and your channel number and color and everything like that. There's also a locate button in case you're having trouble finding your device and it will send out a little tone and a blinking light for you. There's also your battery indicator, your channel number, and you can pair it or unpair it. And then from there, the next is gonna be our menu where we can select multimeter, oscilloscope, logger. These are the three main functions available to us. There is a range tester, which you have to pay extra to unlock that feature. And at the time of filming this video, the power meter and waveform generator are not currently yet available. We're mostly gonna be focusing on all the functions of the multimeter and helping you get set up with your oscilloscope. Now I'll be going over some of the details that are on the screen and going back and forth between that and the meter. A couple things that I wanted to point out is that we can see on our app on the upper left hand corner, it's going to be a reminder of your warning for limitations for voltage or for current, depending on what setting that you're in. So we're just in the voltage measurement mode and it's letting us know, hey, no more than 600 volts available to you. You can also save whatever measurements that you take. You can hold them them, and you can also turn on and off the light for your meter couple things that we're going to want to look at here. We'll have our mode. Whatever mode is automatically available to us, depending on what setting we have here, will be highlighted. So if I change my mode on the meter, it'll automatically update on the app. So I thought that was pretty slick. And then for amperage, we can see there like that. So we have our mode, which we can adjust here on our meter and that will update on the app. We also have our functions. Most of the time, it's going to be our min or our max value. Min and max values up here in this upper left hand corner. You can also reset. Also a little note, when you save a measurement, it'll also store your min and max values in your, your save file, which will be down in your history. Let's go ahead and just take some basic measurements. We are in the volts DC mode. Great. We can see 9.64. So I can hold this measurement if I would like, and that way it just retains it like that. And then I can even go ahead and save that. And if I want access to that and go down to my history and it's stored there, and then I can click on it and it gives me a lot more data. Let's go into the voltage AC setting. Some of you might be curious about the big red bar at the bottom. That's essentially just an on off button. If we'd like, we can go ahead and take an AC measurement. Okay, there's that. And then again, we can go ahead and see that it stored that max value for us. And then if we want, we can save it, check it out. And there it is stored in history. Now, if we have a bunch of stored measurements, we can go ahead, we wanna get rid of them. Go ahead and click history. We can click delete and that'll delete them all. Or we can share it via text or other means. So that covers our voltage measurement settings. Let's head on over to the resistance, milliamp, diode, capacitance settings. And so we can go to mode. Now, something kind of tricky you want to make sure that that selector is right on exactly and clicked and engaged into the measurement that you want to do or else your display won't show up correctly. Now we have a lot more features available to us. We can do resistance, current for AC and DC, temperature. Let's check out our resistance. Let's go ahead and take a measurement of a resistor. What's included with the Pocket Pro, they do have these little clip probes. I'm not a big fan of this style, although they look very nice. I prefer the these standard probe slip-on alligator clips. These also work with the Pocket Pro and they also slide on. They can make measurements like this a little bit easier. These, these alligator clips aren't as nice as the ones that come with the Pocket Pro. Great, so we can see that we have 149. Go ahead and save that if we want. There's also a temperature probe. Now for temperature is pretty slick. We can select Celsius or Fahrenheit. There's also a calibration if needed. That's min and max set up for that. Capacitance. 
go ahead and reset. Make sure we discharge our capacitor before taking a measurement. Go ahead and hook up our leads and say what it comes back with. Give it a second to charge. And if I want, I can just hold that measurement and then I can double check my measured value versus what it's rated for, 680 microfarads. And your units will be over here. Now this does look like a button, but this is not your button. Remember your buttons are your mode, your function. Let's see, we also have a diode setting on here. Diode measurement, that's gonna be our voltage drop across our diode, which should be between 500 and 800 millivolts, which we're seeing 560 there. And then of course, you always test your diodes in both directions. It should remain OC and it does. So that means that this diode is testing good. Now we can also do, I wanted to bring you to current AC. And so we're gonna see our warning here, 300 milliamps max. That's gonna be important when we're making current measurements with this meter, we want to be very careful that our milliamps setting is only rated up to 300 milliamps or you could damage your meter or whatever you're trying to measure. 10 amps is only for your strictly amperage setting. So we want to keep that in mind, but because it's in milliamps, you can go ahead and measure our current. This is milliamps AC. I'm taking a current measurement of an AC circuit and it says 218, but remember that we're in milliamps. So that's 200. 18 milliamps, not 218 amps. So always make sure to pay attention to your units over here so that you don't get confused about what you're trying to measure. Very slick, very cool. Oh, and look at that. It even has it when it stores it. That's funny. 218,000 milliamps. I'm sure they'll sort that out. For the last of our multimeter settings, I wanted to do a higher amperage measurement. I can go to mode here, change the mode on my meter. Now it says I can only measure current DC or current AC. I'm gonna do current DC measurement. Our warning has changed. This is really helpful that they do this for us. 10 amps for no longer than 30 seconds at a time. It's because when we're measuring current, things get really hot. There's a lot of current that's flowing through your meter. You don't wanna be carrying 10 amps of current through your meter meter for longer than 30 seconds, or you're gonna have a bad time. Got a little light bulb here. Now remember when we're doing current measurements, we're always gonna be doing it in series. And so we can see, okay, my 12 volt light bulb is pulling just over two amps. That's great. And then if I wanna save this, I've got my hands full, I can press the button on the meter and you'll see something show up at the bottom of the screen. It says measurement saved successfully. That's great. And then I can go into my history and then I have that 2.14 amps DC and I can look at the details. So that is really handy to do. Now that we've gone over like the standard multimeter measurement stuff, Let's go ahead and go over to the oscilloscope side and see what that kind of function looks like. Remember that this is linked via Bluetooth to your phone or to your tablet, so the oscilloscope refresh rate is limited in what it can do, but the fact that it can do it at all, I think is pretty impressive. I can head into menu, back to oscilloscope. The key to getting the oscilloscope to work is we can see right here on our screen, we just have this black dash. If we remember about our measurements and this little red bar right here is a reminder, all of our measurements should be coming up as red on our screen. So if we don't see a red line, then our oscilloscope isn't turned on. There's gonna be a few things to setting up our oscilloscope that we wanna keep in mind. We're gonna wanna go into mode and then we're gonna have our voltage is gonna be our Y axis and our time is gonna be our X axis, okay? So if we wanna basically zoom in on our Y axis, we'll go to smaller divisions. So I'm gonna set mine to 10 volts. Now the oscilloscope will do current measurements, which I've never seen before. I thought that was really exciting. I thought that was a really cool feature. And then we can set it to AC or DC. We can also do our time division. I think I want it on 10 milliseconds. You can also do in frequency as well, which I thought was really handy. But we're gonna stick to time, 10 volts, get the little circle wheel choo chin. And now I have my red line set up. So this little circle wheel is a button as well as this red bar is a button. Let's go ahead and try and take some waveform measurements. So now we've got up this square wave, but I want my square waves bigger, right? I can go over to my time, make my time smaller. Let's make it one millisecond. There we go, now I can see my waves. And then if I wanna make my waves taller, my Y axis, there you go. And then I can set a trigger if I want to, to keep my waves in one spot. 
The little circle has stopped turning since I did my trigger like that. Now I've got my little wheel turning again, so something to pay attention to. If you're not sure if you're looking at a static measurement or a live measurement, you want to make sure that you have your red wave or yellow or whatever channel that you're on, and then you want this little circle down here in the bottom right to be spinning. It can be a little finicky at times. The fact that you have a Bluetooth oscilloscope on your phone or tablet is pretty impressive as it is, so just try to be patient with it. Something that we can do too two is we can move our reference point up further. Why would we want something like that? Well, right now I'm only doing positive voltage. Let's bring it down negative. Right? And then something that handy too, if we go down to functions, this is a really great way to take our measurements. We can do frequency, period, peak to peak, RMS, average, and duty. For like a little pulse width modulated square wave like this, something that I'd wanna see is probably frequency coming in at just around 1K hertz. And I'd probably wanna see duty cycle. Came at about 63% duty cycle. Voltage would probably be important. So let's select peak to peak, showing 13.7. That's great. Something else that we can do too is we can do full screen, which is really nice. And then we should be able to save. Waveforms are saved successfully. So that should be in our history menu. And then obviously we have our torch button if needed. And there you go. That's the oscilloscope function, which I thought was so impressive. And remember too, it will do uh, amperage and AC, which I thought was really handy. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in the comments section. Uh, I thought this was a really great product. Thank you for joining me another adventure in the garage and I'll catch you on the next one.